Hi everyone, this is Mr. Kong and I'm on my chemistry revision series. This is a topic on experimental techniques. Now as an overview of today's summary, we have, we'll look at the types of apparatus, the accuracy of the apparatus, how to collect gases and how to dry gases. Now before we even look at the type of apparatus, we need to look at what common things we measure in chemistry. As we go along, I want you to think about the various experiments that you have done in the past and to think about what kind of things you have uh, really performed using various apparatus. First thing we have is mass. Now what kind of masses have you encountered and what did you use to measure mass? The second thing is time. Were there experiments that you have performed involving time? What apparatus do you use to measure time? Third, temperature. Were there things that you have done that involved temperature? And what did you use to measure temperature? And finally, volume. I think you have done many, many experiments involving volume of liquids, and maybe not that many involving gases, but I hope that you are able to recall some of these apparatus. Now this summary shows you the various quantities that you are supposed to know and including the SI unit and common units in chemistry. Now the various apparatus as well as the degree of accuracy will be covered in the following slides. For apparatus, we have many of them and we will normally use a few uh, for liquids, especially the measuring cylinder, burette as well as the pipette. Gas syringe is reserved for measuring the volume of gas. Now the measuring cylinder is not a very accurate piece of apparatus and therefore we use it for estimated volumes only. The burette and pipette are accurate and we use them for specific volumes. Especially for pipette, we use them for a particular volume such as 25.0 cm3. In terms of the accuracy of the apparatus, I hope you recall in titration you normally leave the burette readings to two decimal places and the pipette reading is usually 25.0 which is one decimal place. Now before we look at how we can collect gases, I want you to think about the reactions that can produce a gas. Now you can pause this video and think about these reactions. I hope you have thought through some of the reactions and now we're going to go through some of them. The first reaction is an acid and reactive metal reaction which will produce hydrogen gas. The second is an acid and carbonate reaction which produces carbon dioxide gas. The third reaction involves a base with ammonium salt which produces ammonia gas. And the last is an electrolysis process which can produce gases including hydrogen oxygen, and even chlorine. I hope you have gotten some of them right. Now, collection of gases depends on two things. The first depends on the solubility of the gas in water, which has two subcategories, soluble and insoluble. For the next uh, factor, it is the density of the gas as compared to air. Again, it is the, the gas can be lighter or heavier than an air. Now, I've gotten a list of common gases there, are you able to think about the uh, solubility of the gas as well as the density of the gas? Now for insoluble gases, we use displacement of water. Now this method is good for gases such as hydrogen and oxygen. For soluble gases that are lighter than air, we use upward delivery method. And this particular method is good for ammonia. For soluble gases that are heavier than air, we use the downward delivery method and one example of a gas is carbon dioxide. To dry gases, it depends on the nature of the gas. For acidic gases, we pass the gas through concentrated sulfuric acid. For basic gases, we, dry, we pass it through calcium oxide. And for neutral gases, there is usually no particular uh, kind, we can use any method. So this is the summary and think about the various examples of uh, gases that can be used in these cases here.